I've uh, updated our uh, our information here. Uh, we're still not speedrunning and are just watching public domain movies now. Just gonna plunk that one up. Turn off the VLC scroller. And uh, how do you all feel about watching uh, the 1958 sci-fi tour de force Night of the Blood Beast? I bet you feel really good and cool about doing that. All right, let me pop this up here. And then, how do I... Hmm. Hmm, hang on. Can I actually capture that with game cap? No, I can't capture that with game capture. What am I thinking? Oh, I can actually capture it with game capture. <laughs> Who would have guessed? All right, we're going to plunk that down on 0, 0, 0, 0. I'm going to let everybody know that that's what we're doing now. We're going to start right into it. Oh, I'm glad you asked. We're watching uh, the 1958 movie Night of the Blood Beast. It's one of my favorites. It's an hour long, and it's dumb as hell. Does this have subtitles? No, it doesn't. No subtitles for this one, unfortunately. There we go. I'm gonna keep eating this uh, carton of rice here. It's about room temperature at this point, but, uh, I ain't picky. This is X-100 to Goldenrod. X-100 to Goldenrod. Do you read me? Over. Normal descent on instruments. Normal descent on instruments. Altitude 90,000 feet. Approaching critical velocity. Something's wrong. I'm falling too fast. Goldenrod, I'm in trouble. The jets don't break my speed. I'm releasing the drag chute. The ship feels 500 pounds heavier. There's no drag and I'm getting too close to the earth! There's nothing more I can do now. Estimate impact radius. Ten miles northeast, your location. In case recorder's damage, get this. Velocity 6,700 miles. Weight ratio 187. Thrust. 220 tons. I feel like at this point I've trained myself in streamer patterns so much that I could placidly narrate my death as it was happening.
resolutely biting my tongue to not rip off any MST3K riffs. This is one of my favorites. It's a real good one. I'll, uh, I'll tell the others. Baker to Goldenrod Abel. Goldenrod Baker to Goldenrod Abel. Goldenrod Baker to Goldenrod Abel. Goldenrod Baker to Goldenrod Abel. Did you find it? Came down about three miles east of Walker's Pass. Area 116 or 117 on your map. How bad is he? He... he bought it all the way. You're certain? No respiration, no heartbeat, no pulse. Came down pretty hard. The rocket unit's still in one piece and most of the control section. Everything else is scattered around for about half a mile. Tell Donna to cover the entire area. Canaveral will want all the visual data we can give them. Oh, and uh, don't move anything till we get there. Go and Rod Baker out. Terribly sorry, Julie. I can understand how you feel. But we can't let it interfere with the work we have to do. You both knew it was a calculated risk. I'll be all right, Doctor. Well, let's get going. of the smudge. Dr. Wyman wants you to get full coverage on the entire area. This was your first project under Dr. Wyman, wasn't it? Yeah. I helped design the jettison unit that didn't work. On a project like this, there's always a margin for error. You expect it. Sure. And when it comes, you're fine. You really didn't expect it after all. You think Julie expected it, with his engagement ring on her finger? John Cocorn was the first man to be sent up in a satellite and ejected back to Earth. Only well, he was supposed to come back alive. Let's check the rest of them. Look, Dave. Look, don't blame yourself. The answer lies in this wreckage. Let's recheck the crash pattern. Oh, I just noticed the aspect ratio is all messed up. It is uh, slightly stretched horizontally. I'm not going to fix it, I'm just pointing it out. What's that? This rip was smaller when we first got here. Would the stress of settling into the ground have widened it? How could that be? The entire hull is made of magnetic alloy. I'd like to examine the body before we bring it out. All right. Watch you don't cut yourself, Doctor.
been surprisingly clean for the speed that thing came down. It would just be a thin red paste. They didn't have the budget for that, though. Dr. Benson, come here quickly. Bring my bag. body rigidity. No skin discoloration. Temperature feels normal. No dilation whatsoever. The cause of death must be due to an internal rupture. I've never seen an internally damaged body with no sign of rigor mortis after so long. Let's get him back to the lab so we can continue the examination. Dr. Wyman. He wants to take John back to the lab. Right. Dave, get a blanket. I love the haphazard black spray paint on the front. They kind of like, eh, maybe we can kind of look at, make it look like it re-entered the atmosphere. Oh, it doesn't doesn't work? Okay, let's give up now. This is Goldenrod. This is Goldenrod. How do you receive, Or? Aren't they receiving us? That's not the question. Are we transmitting? They don't receive anything from us. They won't try and reach us until the frequency check at 9 o'clock. standards, this man is dead. No heartbeat, no respiration. And his tissues refuse to dissipate. Was well, it possible he could be in a, well, a kind of catatonic state? Could he still be alive? Perhaps a form of hypometabolism. That's impossible. It's hard to stop. There's no circulation. You know as well as I do that when this process stops, the brain starts to deteriorate almost at once. Within a matter of three minutes, it dies. Hello, Everglade. Hello, Everglade. This is Goldenrod. This is Goldenrod. How do you receive? Over. Maybe after this long a radio silence, we'll switch over to an emergency channel. I've already tried that. How about the Air Force? Hello, Air Force Emergency. This is Special CQD Goldenrod Station. How do you receive? Over. Everything's all fouled up here. I couldn't receive the spot weather report on this thing. Yeah, but are you sure it's not your set? No, I've already checked everything. Will you go out and ask Steve to come in here a minute? Sure. Hello, Everglade. Hello, Everglade. This is Goldenrod. This is Goldenrod. Do you receive? Over. Nothing, Doctor. Doctor. What is it? Oh, love that, that theremin. More like something had been forced through the tissue into high pressure. Steve. 
The radio still won't work. Dave wants to see you. Okay. I bet they're going nuts at the Cape. Get that radio working, Steve. We're going to need assistance. What's the trouble? I can't transmit across the room with this thing. It sounds like a magnetic disturbance. Yeah. Could be the power lines fouled up outside. Oh. What's happening in there? I don't know. Somehow we've got to get through to the Cape. You know, five hours overdue now. I bet half the brass in the state of Florida is up in arms. Well, I hope not. If enough people find out about this, we'll have everybody up here. Yeah, I'll check the tower. You stay here and keep trying to get through, will you? Yeah. Look, if you pick up anything, give a yell, huh? Eh? Right. Blood pressure, 120 over 80. Normal for a living man. That's impossible, doctor. You must have made a mistake. The doctor, I checked it twice. Well, this man does have normal pressure. That's impossible. Take a blood sample. I'll make a radiation count. to Everglade. Come in, Everglade. Over. Golden Rod to Everglade. Come in, Everglade. This is an emergency. with no hesitation. Yeah. What happened? Something hit me. It was big like a bear. It came from out of the darkness and was heading for the lamp. I ah, know welcome, shots welcome. I went down. Wounded animal that large isn't good. How well are we armed? Well, besides these pistols, we've got a couple of rifles. I think it headed toward the back of the building. Dave, are you sure you're all right? Yeah, yeah, it just clipped me. It's inside. So, a uh, quick recap. Uh, a guy went into space. Uh, he came back, and he's died. He, he dead. He died. He has perished. Except he's not, like, dead dead. He still has blood pressure for some reason. And this guy got attacked by a an indistinct shadow. Uh, he immediately fired fired like nine rounds into it because it's the 1950s. Oh, and none of the radios work. Time to get the other lanterns. Did it get to him? No. What do you think it was? Well, this didn't come off any bear. Bring the light over here, will you? Yeah, they are completely isolated no in fur, no blood. Uh, Florida, apparently. They Very claim like to be part of NASA. I don't buy it, though. Is the power out completely? Yes, it is. You have any idea what caused it? Could be a break in the cable of the dam or a short circuit in one of the transformers. Dave, are you sure the building was thoroughly checked? Are the wiring and fuses all right? I went over everything thoroughly. I checked everything. I'll check again. 
I wonder if the thing from another world here. is uh public like I said, domain it's probably at this point. Up at the dam. Well, Steve needs some help boarding the window. Right. This kind of reminds me of that. Just in a general pacing and tone sense. Although the thing from another world is well, much better. A place like this would be equipped with heating. Up until a few months ago, this was a radar monitor. It's not bad, actually. Most of the ultra sensitive. It's very different. Systolic was 140. I'll have a blood sample for you in a few minutes. How long do you think it'll take an animal to realize we're incommunicado and send aid? Well, with a security operation as tight as this, maybe another 12 hours. That could mean we could be here another day. I yes, saw. Oh, I'm really glad to hear that. Some extremely good bleak Russian sci-fi. I've never seen anything quite like it. Notice the way it's fighting the others. I love the paper cutout cells in this. Seven hours and his blood is still alive. I'm imagining a version of the thing where Blair's uh, blood test simulation is just replaced with that. Just construction paper One cutouts. One of the drive to the nearest telephone and call a cape. Every minute counts. What is it? I've seen amoebic dominance of a cell structure before, but this is completely out of proportion. Well, what are they? What do they mean? Well, normal blood has two basic cells. The red carry oxygen and the white fight infection. But oh, this that's blood a really has good three. part. The third cell, that big one. Well, that's completely foreign to any blood structure. If that bacterioid is contagious, then we've all been exposed. I doubt if it's communicable. We better get to the nearest town fast. I imagine that'll be Desert City. But that's over 30 miles. Isn't there anything closer? There's nothing on the map. Steve, call the cave from Desert City. Get in touch with uh, Dr. Zimmerman. Don't go into detail. Just tell him to get here as quickly as he can. Well, what about equipment? Well, we need a new power supply. Need a refrigerated truck or an ambulance to transport the body. Oh, and uh, tell him to request priority clearance directly to Walter Reed Hospital in Washington. Right. I'll be back as soon as I can. Keep checking the blood pressure, Doctor. The last count was 140 over 80. Well, that's all we can do for the present. Jack Walters, like the hospital. Can't figure it out. My name's J. Edgar Hoover. My last name's Hoover because I, like the vacuum cleaners, was founded in 1908 and I fucking sucked the entire time. <laughs> it's true. Stopped. They're both stopped. That's a good one. Honestly, uh, when we started playing that, I remembered. Oh, uh oh, somebody, somebody's chipmunking. Take a look. We're in a magnetic force field. A what? A net of static electricity is surrounding the entire area. That's why our power's dead. Oh, we're not going. Well, that was weird. Tonight. Huh? The truck and the jeep are burned out electrically. Yeah, it was coming through at like super speed. There's a very powerful magnetic source. It has been a high. while since I heard Discord do that. All positive electrical That's power. hilarious. Dr. Wyman, how close huh. is the uh, satellite compartment? It sounds fine now. Two, maybe three miles. Just think okay, uh, let's give that one another try. Bombarded with electron particles? Well, it could be. It's happened before. Some of the earlier snark finds the cape. 
Jack, I feel like I misspoke back there. I wasn't saying I was fucking and sucking the entire time. I have been doing that, but that ain't what I was talking about. Well, here's something to complicate things even more. Mm -mm. Oh, I got distracted. I was saying, I remembered that Hoover was in there. I, re I thought he was just in, like, one level. He just had, like, a little cameo and then disappeared. I forgot, like, how much of the game he was in. He dominates the entire last half of that. His shadow looms large over everything. Well, someone or something must have been there. Currently, uh, in the movie, we're, we're doing uh, photo analysis of mud, apparently. There's an explanation and a good one for all of this. There must be. Some of the things that have occurred today are without precedent. A man in there alive, it should be dead. Something that's never happened before. And we've never sent a man so far into space before. Well... We're all tired. That's yeah, fun. It's a delight. Under a Always. Strain. After this long, the Cape has probably contacted the Pentagon. It's just a matter of time. What if they can't get through? The magnetic force field works both ways. Well, and uh, as much as I, as much as I love Night of the Blood Beast, it is not what the kids would call a banger. In this room tonight. Steve and Dave and I will take turns watching Kukorn. Like I mentioned right. earlier, when you said you were going to duck out for like ten minutes. <laughs> Julie. Almost nothing happens in this movie. Almost. I'm sorry, Doctor. I just can't hold it back any longer. I know. <laughs> I wish there was something I could say. I'll listen if you like. It's bad enough losing someone you love. But this, the unknown, being held here. Alex, I don't... Julie. Julie. He alone stood on the threshold of our future. And what happened to him today, we may learn more than we've ever known. Maybe I should just listen. It's so incongruous. I need to look something up real quick. Dead. But is he dead? Oh wow, that wasn't very long at all. So this is uh, 1958. Uh, this probably shot mostly in 57. Life itself is the greatest miracle. Well, when we get him to the hospital tomorrow, maybe we'll know going on about how uh, John in there was the first man in space. Only a couple years later, in 1961, Yuri Gagarin would go into space and just be like, hey, it's actually, it's actually totally chill out here. It's fine. No big deal. no god, and also no blood beasts. Here we go. Okay, things are finally starting to happen. It's 
nothing you can do. <laughs> Got him. What's the difference between a cosmonaut and an astronaut? A cosmonaut went to space first. Whatever it is, it works fast. Let's take him down. and forever. <laughs> Not like this, doofus. It's impossible not to talk about this. I said I was going to avoid jokes that Mystery Science Theater did. Johnny, you're all... It really does seem like everyone in this movie is named Steve. I don't know. I think so. Where's Dr. Wyman? What happened? Suppose you tell us what happened. Julie, what happened to Dr. Wyman? He's dead. Why are you staring at me? You don't think that I had anything to do with it. John, we're just as confused as you are. Did you see anything? Was there anybody in the room with you and Dr. Wyman? I don't know. <laughs> Last thing I remember, I was making my descent. The jets didn't take hold. When I finally released the drag chute, it didn't hold. It was too close to the ground. You crashed. We brought you here. You don't remember. I seem to be floating. In a warm, black mist. Oh, my head. My neck. Oh, no. Look at that. Say, Mark. What's this? Tell me what's happening. Johnny. What a powerful mood. This is just me all of the time. We thought you Constantly were waking up as though from yeah. death and finding injuries that I don't remember sustaining. What do you mean, dead? When we pulled you out of the compartment, your body had completely ceased to function. A hypometabolistic state, a type of suspended animation brought on by the contraction of the mesentery blood vessels in the pressure change of landing. That kind of terminology I'd expect it from Dr. Wyman, not from you. Well, it seemed like the natural diagnosis. From Dr. Wyman, yes. In some way, I think Dr. Wyman is influencing me. I think he may be a part of me now. He does have a very interesting look to I him. don't understand. You've got to help me! Help me! It's, it's not like, like the kind of actor you normally it's see them happen. cast as an astronaut in the 50s. Usually you'd see like a John Agar type. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Just a real Dirk slam pack. Did you come here to destroy? Johnny, try to tell us what didn't come here to destroy us. Is he all right? Yes. They're gone. Yes, exactly. We put our faith in blast hard cheese. What are you talking about? Come see for yourself. I love that Back whole bit. Looks like now. Normal in space mutiny. 
Four hours ago, it was populated with alien amorphic uh, cell structures. Which one was the first one where they did it, though? There was a... I think we should see what I look like under the... A couple of seasons earlier than that. There was either... I think it might have been 12 to the moon. Or How rocket ship XM. It operates on a radium cathode tube. Where they did the, the first thing of... Uh, the amorphic uh -oh. cell structures have expanded to... They're using his body for a breeding ground. You're not going to harm them, are you? What do you mean? We don't even know what they are. The one thing we do know is that they're alien to the human body. Somehow they must have come down with you in the compartment. Only a few hours ago they were microscopic. We've got to do something. If you destroy them, you destroy me. Thickens. You can't destroy them. But why not? That's why not. There it is. hesitation yeah th this go this is going about as well as the fight in the radio room always goes for me I think we ought to track it down and make sure it's dead. No, let's wait for help. We can't possibly combat that thing by ourselves. Look, nobody has gotten to us, and no one probably will until it's destroyed. Why does it have to be killed? Why are we uh, always... Even, even in a movie this oh, short, there's been many the scream close-ups. John, you know what it's done to you, breathing its young in your body. You saw what it did to Dr. Wyman. Isn't that reason enough? It has to be killed. I don't understand. It didn't come in malice. It could have killed all of you earlier, but it was me it was after. It had to come back to me to, to nourish its young. Well, all the more reason to destroy it. Suppose it is still alive. Bullets don't harm it. Well, fire seems to. How about a very pistol? It has an engulfing flame plus a delayed explosion. That's better than a ladder. Very pistol? A flare gun. At short range, it'll chop down anything. There's some in the cabinet in the hall. I'll get them. No, Dave, you can't. Listen, you can't kill a living creature without giving it a chance to justify itself. Oh. Let's put him in there. Can you give him something to keep him quiet? Sodium amatol. Good. Yeah, it kind of is. I'll leave you here to watch him. Donna will come with us. We're going to need photographic coverage. Will that really keep him out until we get back? I don't know. Under normal circumstances, this should render him unconscious for at least 12 hours. But this isn't a normal person. What you and he were to each other has no bearing on what he is now, Julie. I'm not worried. He's not dangerous. Not to me, anyway. It's using a lot oh, we of. We can't take any chances. That creature loses. Sci-fi like. Or if he gives you a bad time. I guess you would say sci-fi language that other sci-fi stories around that time would engaged, use, but it's using it from thanks. the starting thanks. position of, oh, there's an alien. We gotta kill it. It's no obviously word. here to do harm, so we need to destroy we it as quickly as trouble. possible. We're not gonna be heroes. Just pull the hammer back. Just be back as soon as you can.
this guy, I'm pretty sure, is actually named Steve. 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 I think it's leading us back to the compartment. Yeah, the other guy there is named Dave, How long though. do you think we've been out? Hey, look, my watch is running again. Mine, too. That means the magnetic field must be broken. It must be dead. We better make certain. Just the way that they call out to each other and speak to each other really does make it seem like everyone in this is named Steve. It's very funny. Alright, that's my one reference to the Mystery Science Theater episode. I'm gonna, I'm gonna not make any more. That's it. Last one. Uh, something stuck to the camera frame. Yeah, it's still there. Look at that. Uh, can't see my mouse cursor. It's right there in the upper right corner. Well, it seems like the most likely place for it to go. Yeah, I don't see anything. Maybe it's on the inside. Yeah. I'll let you stay here until we're sure it's safe. Dave, you circle to the left, and I'll go to the right. Check. like she has like kind of a, a whole look that feels very she seems more 80s than 50s maybe 70s with how they usually cast and shoot these things around like the 50s and 60s you kind of don't expect to see normal looking people possibly live through that. Look, it stopped again. Hey, Steve! I better get and back they both back. look. <laughs> yeah, they have this kind of standardized... Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, they have this kind of standardized look. I've seen essentially zero Korean TV. Right there, where the little grabby hand is. Hold it! It's gonna kill her! Far over its head! It's a little dangly bit on the camera frame. I think so. It could have killed me. But it didn't. It probably would have we hadn't chased it off. Might have wound up like Wyman. We better get back. Julie's all alone and the monster may try and contact Akorin again. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, it does seem like Dave and Steve are the more like 50 sci-fi leading man types. Where's John here? And, uh, the photographer lady whose name I've completely forgotten. Don't be afraid, Julie. I'm not gonna hurt you. That wasn't meant for you. That was for the... It seemed more like, uh... Oh, hey, welcome back. Don't stare at me, Julie. We're, uh, two-thirds of the way through Night of the Blood Beasts. Hey, what nice. Is true, and I've been dead. I don't know what this means for us, but I haven't changed in my feeling. Hey, and uh, 
add another victory on here. You're really back well. just in time for, uh... You don't understand what's happened to me, and... Yeah, you're just, you're back in time to see Norm Chester here. You want to destroy it. And also, it the last third of Night of the Blood Beast, where things actually happen. Why not let the creature have a chance to tell us why it's here? But it broke in and attacked us. It killed Dr. Wyman, and it's done this to you. We had to do something. Now the others have gone to make sure it's dead. A norm chest here here is uh, full of alien babies. How do you know? Just chock full of them. Little squirming sea monkey looking things. Something foreign is inside of me. Alive. If there was any cause for fear, <laughs> I know it. But I'm not afraid. This creature is intelligent. It wants something. We've got to give it a chance to communicate with us. We were just talking earlier, like... This is absolutely... Absolutely carrying itself like, uh... It didn't work. A much heavier sci-fi story. What happened? But just starting from the standpoint of, obviously we need to kill the alien. He told me it would be. Somehow he knew. He seemed so sure that it's not evil. This isn't a battle between men and an unreasoning being. Can't you see it doesn't want to kill for the sake of killing? It could have done away with all of us earlier if it wanted to. Until we discovered its fear of fire. Listen, when you were out checking the power lines last night, all you had with you was a pistol, which you fired at it with no effect. If it had been a wild animal, it would have tried to kill you before moving on. Can you account for what happened to Dr. Wyman? No, I can't. But maybe it could if we gave it the chance. Why should we give it a chance? It's already committed murder. It's done, I, I don't know what, to you when it's attacked Donna. Donna, that's the photographer's girl, Look, name. If you were in a strange place and you were trying to communicate with the inhabitants, but every time you tried, they made a move against you, the only way to break through to them would be to take a hostage. Can't you see that's what it's been doing? It's been acting out of fear and self-preservation. It wants to communicate with us, but it, it doesn't know how. We've got to give it a chance. So what do you have in mind? It's obvious the creature keeps coming back to me because part of it is inside of me. Why not let me lead us to it? In the daylight, in the open. Maybe he's got something. When we were out searching for the creature, our watches started running again. And then when we encountered it, they stopped. On our way back here, they became active again. And now everything's dead. Now, it's my guess that the Magnetic disturbance originated from two different locations. One from the creature. And then from you. It might be the only thing that's keeping you alive. If my life has been given back to me, it's for a purpose. Trust me. And we'll learn why. If the creature isn't what you believe it to be and we're forced to kill it, then we have no indication of what will happen to you. I know. That's why it's important to let the creature make itself known before we take any action. All right. But if we follow Johnny's plan, we still have to be prepared. We have no way of knowing what... He really does, yeah. Remember, we've agreed to give the creature every opportunity to... Again, Steve and Dave are the more, like, 50s leading man types, but they still look extremely tired and depressed. Let's see if you get as much sleep as you can. Will it come back here tonight? I don't know. Considering it's a Corman joint, it's hard to tell if that's intentional or not. for his actions. I think it might be a trap. Oh, we have definitely is. watched worse. This time we're going to be prepared. Come on. This forms kind of an interesting uh, 
interesting counterpoint to uh, Phantom from gun. Space. We fill it with gasoline and then use it as a hand grenade. That's a ticket. We could saturate the creature and detonate it with a very pistol. There's no way it could escape then. Phantom from Space uh, carried itself only by uh, us goofing on it, pretty six. much. There was nothing compelling in that. The Take them with us. Better than leaving them here unprotected. That's enough. Are we going to tell Julie and Donna about this? Uh, I think we better. Make sure Johnny doesn't find out, huh? Yeah, whereas this is like, this is... It's cheap. Yeah. Guadalcanal. Grilla tank was running wild behind But like, our they're line. doing stuff. There's moving parts here. We knew here. we couldn't do any much damage with our rifles, so he was playing kind of a cat and mouse game. So they knew he could finish us off. Not far from where we were, there was a truck overturned, and I kid in it saw what was happening. Got the brilliant idea to bring me some gasoline, and we made up some of these. That tank came by, we smeared it, but good. Pretty horrible to see, but it worked. Yeah, well, it'd be good for me to get off of this mountain. Even with these cocktails, I'm not anxious to tangle with that creature again. Well, none of us are, but I don't think we have any choice. It came down the satellite, it's our responsibility. Besides, it's better to stalk it and have it come after us. Yeah, you're probably right. And so, uh, I wish we could wait for some help. I just don't like the idea of taking Julie and Donna with us. Well, I don't either. Then we don't know when help will arrive. We can't leave them alone. Oh, uh, that body under the sheet, by the way, is uh, the Dr. Wyman they keep mentioning. Uh, something ate half of his head. What Was it doing? the Blood Beast? Was it John? We don't know. I couldn't sleep. I had to see how he was killed. Half his head gone. It's horrible. I don't expect you to trust me. I don't even know whether I can trust myself, but please don't treat me like a monster. I haven't done anything wrong. John, it's not a question of right or wrong. Maybe you're not responsible for your actions. Whether you are or not, who knows what you might do? Look, John, that you... Don't you realize this unknown creature is using your body as a breeding ground? We don't know what to expect. I can't deny anything you've said. I do receive impulses from the creature, but... I know I have free will. I... I know I can still make my own decisions. Was well, it your own free will or the creature's? But insist it's benevolent. I'm not sure. But I do know that we have to give it a chance to explain. And I know that no harm will come to you. Daylight will be here in about three hours. Better get some rest. It's all the same to you, I'll stay here for a while. I'll, I'll get the bags. You will give it a chance to explain. We'll give it a chance. What a line delivery right there. That says everything. John definitely knows. And so does the beast. stuck on there while they were doing the exterior shots. The creature isn't far away. There's some hills to the north. And a cave. Right there. 
But he's never been in this area before. How does he know there's a cave? stuff with like an old timey movie camera. I think it, I think even with modern ones. Uh what do they call it? The thing that's like around the lens. The mat. I think that's it. You can kinda see on the right side of the frame as well. That fuzzy border where it's uh it's just the mat over the actual uh, field of view. cropped this for uh, video distribution. Got pretty close on the left side, but not on the right or the top. nothing to fear. We're not going to take any unnecessary chances. The girls will wait here. Okay, you lead the way. You're going to give it a chance. You're not going to kill it. You're not going to kill it! What happened? Why did you let him go? I couldn't stop him. I think this is the same cave that uh, It Conquered the World ended at. I brought them to you. They don't understand. I'm not sure I do. How can I help you to communicate with us? Now I am able to speak by assimilation, a form of photosynthesis. I have been able to incorporate certain of Dr. Wyman's functional processes. Was Dr. Wyman's death necessary? Through his sacrifice, I can communicate, understand your reasoning. Your motivations, your way of life. I will need your help. Together we must make them understand that I have not harmed you, and that we will give them a better way of life. too far away. Let's move in. Many of his faculties. With his voice, I am able to communicate with you. You killed him! He is not dead. Not dead? He has gained something more than life as you know it. He is the first of your kind to attain immortality. Immortality? We're not interested in that kind of immortality. I know you want to destroy me, but listen. Please listen. I only want to help you. Millions of years ago, my people inhabited a planet such as yours. We discovered the ultimate power, just as you on Earth are about to do. You're ready to make your move. We should have put this power to our own benefit. Instead, hatred, greed, and prejudice caused us to misuse that power. 
and it brought about our own destruction. Open target. Now's our chance. But you can't risk killing Johnny. No, wait. What harm is there in hearing them out? For centuries, we have been circling your Earth, waiting for a means to penetrate your atmosphere. Your projectile was the first to present a means of entry. Those before were not retractable and burned as they fell back to Earth. I am the first to come. Death and destruction? If what you say is true, what are we to expect? You need me, and I have come. Through me, we will unite our intellects within one body. It's insane. And how do you plan to do that? Already it has begun. Within the hour, the first of our new generation will be born. It's true. I can feel them inside. You're imposing your will on us. You're sacrificing our civilization for the resurrection of your own. I've been a fool. The only way you can be saved from your downfall is by our sacrifice. What you propose is dominance, not salvation. Don't be governed by fear. Go ahead and kill me. You've already said I'm dead. A dead man with a brain and a body kept alive artificially to, to feed a generation of monsters. That's, That's not true. If you don't kill me, a new civilization is inside of me. It will destroy mankind as we know it today. The future of our race is in you. You've got to kill me. We have to destroy it. John! That's demoral, baby. Run, get away from it! Oh. He will live on to become a greater being in future generations to come. Don't kill me. In destroying me, you are destroying your only hope for mankind. the smoke coming off of that is the right decision John made the decision let's hope it was the right one I'll probably never know him that little bit there was just solid column of black smoke coming off of it Dave gets slightly too close and just like actually I'm gonna go over this other side now Definitely, definitely felt its length, despite being about an hour and two minutes. Fittingly, I did finish my drink pretty much right around there, so we've already got one down in that regard. Boy, there were a lot of movies that ended with just like, uh, I guess we'll never Excellent know. Timing there, pilot. Ah, thank you. Especially, especially ones from around this, like, uh, particular, um, uh, what is the word I'm trying to use? 
Uh, I've had one. I've had one old fashioned, and my brain is sludged. Oh, like Corman films. Corman films loved to present a movie, get to the end, and just be like, "Well, you know, you think about it. You, the audience, you you think about it. Bye," and just end. Except for uh, It Conquered the World, where uh, the ending is basically just, uh, uh, remember kids, don't let communism take root, or else carrot monsters? Question mark. That one is regrettably not public domain, as far as I know. Otherwise, that would be an absolutely buckwild watch for uh, ideology reasons. So let's see here. How would we sort this? Is this bad? Or was it good? I personally, I love this movie for just pretty much what we've been what we've been when been previously talking about. It's competent enough as just like a little like a bottle story. You got some defined characters, you put them in a closed location they can't get out of. You got some weird sci-fi stuff happening. It's not as incompetent. Well, no, I wouldn't even really use the word incompetent to describe Corman movies. If there's one thing that Roger Corman's oeuvre is not, it's incompetent. Because, like... A lot of those movies aren't good, but, uh, you know, Corman could take, like, you know, a, a, a couple of actors, a couple thousand dollars, one location, and shoot a perfectly acceptable movie. I would maybe say the others are less uh, cohesive, perhaps. This one definitely is, uh, it has something it's doing. It eventually lurches to an ending that, despite being very, perhaps we'll never know in how it concludes, it is still the conclusion of the little, uh, bottle story that happened. The blood beast got burned, and John is now dead dead as opposed to just mostly dead plus it's only an hour long and could absolutely just be playing on like a random playlist I do also something else I really love about how that ends uh pretty much any time I think this also happens in It Conquers the World the 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 beast, the monster, the alien, or whatever, the, the titular it that conquered the world. Uh, when you get to the end of the movie, it's been saying all along, oh, we're doing this to help humanity, you know, we're doing this to, to bring you to, you know, a new kind of existence or whatever, well, we want to help you. And then at the very end, when, you know, the square-jawed hero who... I think in It Conquered the World was played by Peter Graves? I think he was in that. Uh, gets to the end and defeats the monster, and the monster's like, oh, oh, you got us. You were evil the whole time. I love that the Blood Beast ends by just saying, like, you are not ready. You, you don't understand us, but we will save you. You'll send more satellites. It never admits that it was lying. It's just like, you're not ready ambiguous in a way that feels earned as opposed to the usual whelp make you think ending or oops we forgot to include a moral ending I could easily see this just being on a random playlist I'm gonna put this into ah perfect timing Muna what do you think good bad I think good personally
yeah, very watchable. It's it's brisk. It's short. It's got like interesting looking people doing stuff. I'm put this in good. Our current list of good movies now sits at Assignment Outer Space, Attack from Space, House on Haunted Hill, Night of the Blood Beast, and Santa Claus Conquers the Martians, which, by the way, by the way, uh, my VOD of when we watched that finally got unmuted the other day. I disputed uh, the copyright claims on those, uh, saying that it was public domain, and several months later, someone at Twitch was like, oh, that is public domain, okay. Now, granted, that means that if we do watch it again, I'm going to have to go through that process for uh, every single time we watch it, because I, I don't think they will release that. Uh, House on Haunted Hill also had a problem, but I forgot to I forgot to dispute the claim on the VOD instead of on the broadcast, and so my broadcast expired. Uh, Santa Claus Conquers the Martians? I don't remember... I don't remember what we were playing when we watched that. I think I was still playing SnowRunner. Uh, that is the one where Santa Claus gets kidnapped by aliens. There's this whole thing about, like, oh, Mars has no... Mars has no Santa Claus. Uh, Mars, the Martian children are, uh... You know, they're, they're nerds. They need a Santa Claus. And so they kidnap Santa Claus, and Santa Claus builds a machine that, that manufactures toys using superior Martian technology. And he's just like, oh, all I do is push a button. You don't really need me. You need this other guy. Oh, yeah, there was that one, like, Martian supremacist guy who I don't remember his name. It had a K in it. He had a mustache. Uh, at one point, he tries to kill both Santa Claus and the two Earth children that they accidentally kidnap by uh, ejecting them from the airlock, giving them the old space mercy. But uh, Santa Claus saves them improbably. I don't remember how. Oh, it was... Yeah, he... Mm, <laughs> it was not an accident. He absolutely was going to space mercy them. Oh, yeah, you're right. He did deliberately kidnap them. I thought they accidentally... Oh, you're right. I, for some reason, was convinced they got accidentally swept up, but I realized I was thinking of something else. Yeah, no, they they saw them, and then that, that Martian supremacist guy was just like, oh, well, there's witnesses. We have to eliminate them. Send the robot after them. And then the robot went after them, and then the kids were like, oh, cool, a robot. And they befriend the robot, and the robot just brought them along. Oh, what was the robot's name? The robot had a really good name. The robot was Togar, I want to say. Or was that one of the lions in Roar? I think that might have been one of the lions in Roar, actually. We should probably... We should probably watch Santa Claus Conquers the Martians again. I'll have to put that on while we play something else. Uh, I... I don't think it's... I don't think we should probably watch it tonight, though, because it is... It is, uh, like, an hour and a half. So that's, like, a little bit more of a commitment. Let's see here. Going for about two and a half hours. We did some speed running. We watched a movie. Hmm. You know what? Play some Doom. Just play a little bit of Doom. Why not? Ah, let me oof. sit up straight here. Yeah, somebody is somebody is DMing. sounds about right. 
I would love to make more progress in Tron, but I'm in more of a doom mood. So, uh, let me go ahead and, uh... Flip the big switch that says doom. And, uh, one second while I get everything set up. Happy fucking doomsday indeed. Doomsday in July. Doomsday on Saturday slash Sunday. Who could have guessed? 